And bang! What is about National Wrestling Shooters members and viewers? Your owner, Tim Queen, Finding Fighter, Scott Casey Gale here. And today, I'm gonna give you my AEW Dynamite reveal. It was the go home show to this Saturday's AEW pay per view, Double or Nothing 2. And for a go home show, I thought it was a great show. I really enjoyed tonight's episode of AEW Dynamite from beginning to end. Okay, let's begin the recap and reveal, shall we? The show opened the inner circle, arriving at Daddy's place in a stretch level. Jericho bragged that, that what they did to Vanguard 1 is nothing compared to what they're going to do to the ED. Really good good interview with Chris Jericho. I really like, like what him and the inner circle are doing. All right, and then multiple wrestlers, um... So I'm um, the ring with Private Party and Big Swell wearing SG armbands and trip and tribute and tribute of Shad Gasper. All I gotta say is West in peace, Shad Gasper. I always liked you as a West. So I respected everything you everything you did. Your in ring work, your promo skills, especially when you were part of Crime Time. You and JTG were just amazing, hilarious, and you were definitely a tag team. And um. And, and and major respect to you as a person and um huge respect to you for sacrificing your own life to save your your son. Rest in peace, once again, rest in peace, Shad Gasper, but you will be missed but never forgotten. And then the commentators for the show were Jim Ross, Excalibur, and Tony Schiavone, as Dash was handling ring announcing duties. So then the first match was John Moxley versus Ten. Before the match got started, Brody Lee is still holding Moxie's title as John Silver, Alex Reynolds, and a few other followers head out to the stage. Lee on the mic says he wants to address the fans. He first asks Ten to take a proper knee. <clears throat> Lee says the fans might be feeling a disconnect because he's a leader, but he's no god, simply a man, a man who comes into possession of Moxie's title. Lee says he operates at an elite level, making the Dark Order the Lions of AEW. On Saturday, Lee says he has to win, not only for his own desire, but to pay off the loyalty of his followers. He tells Tam he's special, and now is, is the time to help the, cake, help the cause. He says Tam is now a high knight of the Dark Order. He tells Tam to hurt Moxie. Then Lee and the group head to the back, Moxie makes his way to the ring. Moxie, Moxie with a white, really great, really good promo from um Brody Lee. I've said it many times before. For I really Brody Lee being revealed as the exalted one was absolutely beautifully well done. I mean, he's finally being himself, and WWE has really missed an opportunity because this is what they could have done with Brody Lee, but Vince McMahon and WWE did not see anything in him. Now they're really wishing they did. And anyway, back to the match. Moxie with a high knee right, right off the bat, right off the bat. Then a shoulder that captures suplex. He stomps away at his opponent in the corner. Ten lands a shot, setting Moxie to the to the apron. Lands a pump kick, setting Moxie to the floor. Moxie then set hard into the barricade and dropped back face 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 first on the apron, back in the in the wing. Ten continues to go to work. Pin two count. Moxie with a back, back elbow chops to the chest, but then eats a spine buster. He then picks Moxie up, but then takes a DDT, a gotch style pile driver, and and styles a, a bit as as he taunts Lee to come out. Moxie lands a paradigm shift cover, and that'll do it. When a John Moxie via paper, pretty good match in my opinion. Opinion. And then, and then after the match, Moxie threw two chairs into the ring. He he then put Ten's arm through through one of the chairs and stood on and stood on it and stood on it. Moxie then threatened to break Ten's arm until Brody Lee, Lee came up to face him. Brody appeared on the Titan Tron and said that he's leaving, but he'll see Mox on on Saturday. Moxie attacked Ten's chopped arm with the other chair. Great. Um, once again, I thought this was um, 
very well done. I like how Mr. Brody Lee is playing mind games from John Moxie. That's how you do a build-up to a pay-per-view. That's how you do a rivalry. And I'm really looking forward to seeing Mr. Brody Lee versus John Moxie for the AW World Heavyweight Championship. Who's going to win? I don't know. But I will be giving my predictions later on this week. And then the next match was M the returning MJF defeated Marco Stunt. Wardlow interfered by ch by choking Marco on against the bottom rope behind the web's back. But Marco still got a, a lot of, of off offend, offense and, and before he eventually knee, knee tapped to the side of the earth. After the match, Wardlow held Stunt up while MJF punched him to the first ring. Lucha Source and Jungle Boy ran him to make the save. Eh, yeah, pretty decent match. And then this is one of my favorite part, one of my favorite parts of AEW Dynamite, my favorite segment of the night. On Anderson, Jake the Snake Roberts sat at a table in the ring, watched over by by Tony Schiavone and cut promos on each other, and and there was and there were respective charges. Cody Rhodes and Lance Archer they stood up and stood up and Jake threw the table. Well, aside him just just when it seemed like there was going to be an old old man fight, a bunch of referees ran in and broke it up. Uh, this I love this. I mean, both both Jake the Snake Roberts and Arn Anderson, said they cut a horrible promo. I mean, and this felt very very old school, very old school. That's how it's, that's how you do it. Jake, I said it many times before, that despite them being retired buses and despite the ages, Jake the Snake Roberts and Arn Anderson definitely know how to, to cut a screw. This kind this promo took me back to the to the old days of WCW. I loved it that much. Hats off to Arn Anderson and um Jake the Snake Roberts for cutting an amazing, an amazing promo. I highly recommend you check it out. Because you won't be disappointed. And then I'm Darby Allen presented an 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 an, an artsy video building up to Saturday's ladder match, which I which I really enjoyed. And then Pack appeared in a video promo saying he'll never he'll never be be forced to sit sit home doing nothing again. And, and he sent and he sent Phoenix to face to assess. And he, excuse me. And he sent Phoenix to assassinate Orange Cassidy. So it was match number three. Ray Phoenix defeated freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy. The match was surprisingly competitive, but then Kip Sabian provided a, a distraction by bringing a ladder to ringside and sitting on top of it to watch the match. And Phoenix took Cassidy down for the free count. After the match, Scorpio Sky and Frankie Kazarian came out and dumped S Sabian off the ladder. Then a bunch of other guys came out and it became a huge messy bar. Hmm. Pretty cool match in my opinion. I mean, and pretty cool bar as well. And then match number four, Nyla Rose and Dr. Britt Baker defeated Chris Statnett and Hikaru Shida. Rose pinned Shida after a beast bomb. After the match, Nyla got a, a table and was about to put Hikaru food, but Chris interfered and to give Hikaru Time to recover. She didn't suplex Rose through the table instead. Eh, this is just a decent match. Uh, not the best. Best. AEW still needs to still needs a lot of work on on, on the women's division. It's improving a little bit, but not very much. But it's but it but, but but like I said, they really need they they definitely need to work on their work on their women's division. Anyway, like I said, decent match. And then Alex Marvez interviewed John Moxley, who said that things are only going to get worse from here. And he's going to put Brody Lee to sleep at double or nothing. Good interview. Pretty good interview um, with, with Alex Marvez and um, John Moxley. And then Sean Spears appeared as the, the anchor of SSN, Sean Spears News, where point of Dustin Rhodes has retired after his defeat by Lance Archer, and he challenged Dustin to a match at double or nothing. Pretty interesting. I, I like this. 
And then it was the main event. Matt Hardy defeated Sammy Guevara. He pinned him at the Twister Fate. Pretty good main event, but, but, but I really liked what happened. I really liked what happened after the match. It, when a, it was a huge bar. A huge bar, which I thought was beautifully well done. It was the best part of tonight's episode of AEW Dynamite. My, especially seeing the Young Bucks back. I really liked everything I think, think about this bar. As for this episode of AEW Dynamite, I would rate it a solid 10 out of 10. Five stars. Two thumbs up, way up, way up, and an A triple plus. Comment down below in the comment section. Tell me what you thought about tonight's ep episode of AEW Dynamite and what you are looking forward to at AEW Double or Nothing. Anyway, you stay classy, live long and prosper, and, and peace out. And I must step into a do. Good night and goodbye. And bang! And I want to catch that bang bang. Good night, everybody.